Hi, I'm Todd Heike. I'm the owner of Dakota Angler here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, with this week's two-minute fishing report. Well, folks, old man winter definitely has had its way with us this past week. Boy, we got hit with a major winter storm uh, that last weekend, uh, and that really affected the number of people that were going out. I did bring in some uh, cooler air, there's no doubt about that, or should we say colder air, and that helped out the ice conditions. However, you know, we still had a lot of open water before the storm, and then when the colder air came in, that froze a lot of it back over, but now it's becoming difficult to tell the good ice from the bad ice. So again, I can't encourage you enough to make sure that you have a spud bar or some way to test that ice thickness as you go across the lake. Guys that are walking out aren't having any issues. Uh, I think uh, four-wheel traffic, uh, you know, ATVs or uh, side-by-sides, maybe up further to the north has been okay. But again, you have to use caution out there. And the biggest problem up further to the north has been the amount of snow and the drifting that's been taking place with the strong winds that we've had the past, uh, let's say, five to six days. So keep that in mind. I think a lot of the accesses may be a little bit tough to get through. Uh, for the, but for the most part right now, from what I'm hearing, uh, guys are still able to make it around okay once you're out on the lake. So uh, again, as we move forward, the main thing is use caution, uh, test your ice thickness as you go out, and don't necessarily rely upon the report. Test it out for yourself before venturing too far out away from the shore. As far as the fishing report is concerned, again, the weather has definitely affected the number of uh, people going out, and that has affected the number of reports coming in. Up in the northeastern part of the state, uh, guys that were catching walleyes were on lakes such as Bitter, Wabe, Blue Dog, and even a few on Indian Springs. And then other than that, at uh, southeast, Ponset, Thompson, Drive by Willow Lake, and they've got to be careful of the ice there. Uh, Campbell, have to sort quite a bit. Uh, East Oakwood, and then also a few are being caught at Henry. Uh, Clear Lake, as well as Sinai, and Sinai is mainly in the, by the bays. And then also uh, North Island has been producing a few walleyes. Now, what have guys been using to catch the walleyes? Really nothing in particular. It seems like uh, they're kind of searching for that uh, magical lure yet, but a lot of guys have been using Rappler Rippin' Wraps, uh, Northland Buckshots, uh, also Northland Buckshot Flutter Spoons, and then also the Lindy Glow Spoons have been working well. Uh, and then as far as the panfish bite is concerned, again, uh, definitely affected by the weather. Uh, the perch bite, Ponset, Sinai, Big Stone, Hendrix, Pius, Island, as well as Scott Slough. And then a few crappies are still being caught at uh, Schaefer Slough, as well as a few at Ponset. But then as far as bluegills are being concerned, a really great bluegill bite going on down the Iowa Great Lakes and the bays and West O. Uh, keep that in mind. And what guys have been using down across the area to catch uh, the panfish, a lot of tungsten, a lot of venom tungsten have been working really well. Otherwise, drop chain lures such as the Haley, Pilkey, and the Johnson Spoons. And then also being tipped with uh, waxworms, maggots, and small minnows. In this week's version of Todd's Tackle Tips, we're going to talk about glow jigs. And every week people ask me, why do we use glow? Why is it so important? Well, folks, uh, again, I think it depends on the situation. Uh, glow jigs come very important when it comes to low light conditions, whether or not you're dealing with murky water, stained water of some sort, or, again, low light conditions like a lot of snow on the ice, or early morning, or late afternoon and evening. Uh, when you're using glow jigs, that just increases the chance and likelihood of your bait being seen. So why not use them? And that's what's increased the popularity of a lot of jigs that use glow sticks, such as the 13 fishing lures, or uh, the, the Lindy glow spoons, or the uh, the Northland uh, flutter spoons and buckshot flutter spoons. All those come in handy, and they use a glow stick. There's a number of other jigs that are made by a number of other companies that. All you need to do to make them glow is to charge them. And what do you charge them with? A UV flashlight. And this is one made by uh, Northland. Very popular one, very affordable. Uh, $13.50 basically will get you a flashlight, a UV flashlight, which is going to be a higher wavelength to make that jig glow a lot better. Now, the thing that you need to remember about using glow jigs, the color depends on how, uh, will determine how long that jig will actually glow. The red color will glow the brightest, will, but will dim the quickest. The blue and the greens, they'll glow the dimmest but last the longest. So again, all those things that come into a factor and come into play when determining what type of jig you're going to use. Uh, I use a lot of glow reds, especially let's say, you know, in deeper water or even uh, like Ponset or Thompson. But then I'm all pulling that jig back up and charging it up more often than I would be with a green or a glow, uh, green or a blue glow jig. So again, all those things you need to keep in mind when you're using the glow jig, the more often you charge it, the brighter it will be and the longer it will last. Now it's time to take a look at a few photos that you sent in to me this past week.
And remember, folks, if you'd like your photo included in next week's version of the Two Minute Fishing Report, please send it to me. Send it to Todd at DakotaAngler.com or post it to our Facebook wall. And if I use your photo, your name will be entered into a monthly drawing for a $25 gift certificate. Well, folks, I hope all of you had an enjoyable New Year's and a safe New Year's Eve. And I just wanted to let you know that next week, the week of January 5th, we will not once again have a fishing report. Uh, I know some of you are going to be really broken heart, uh, broken hearted about that and broke up about it. Uh, but that's the way it is. And uh, I just appreciate all of you uh, continuing to watch this week after week. A lot of people ask me why I do it. It's not to, to do anything other than to provide a service to you. And I know some of you find it of use. Some of you find it a nuisance. Uh, but again, uh, at least I appreciate all of you, no matter how you feel about it, I appreciate all of you watching it. Well, folks, that's this week's version of the Two Minute Fishing Report. For Dakota Angler, I'm the owner of Todd Heitkamp, and as we say around here, fish on! We'll see you next time, and again, thanks for watching.